Hi, I'm Rex Allen, and I've been asked to talk a little bit about a dear friend of mine, Boy Proctor, Midland, Texas rancher, banker, cattle buyer, rodeo enthusiast, stock show judge, community builder, and civic leader. But above all else, a cattleman, first, last, and always, is our distinguished and most worthy guest of honor here this evening. It is fitting indeed that Boy Proctor, as he nears his 89th birthday, should be the recipient of the 1984 National Golden Spur Award, presented in recognition of a lifetime of dedicated service in and for the livestock industry of the great Southwest and far beyond. A native West Texan and a 77-year resident of Midland, Mr. Proctor long has been a recognized leader in the breeding and raising of better beef cattle and improved ranching and soil conservation methods and measures in the three-state region in which he is ranched. His fame and fortune gained from scratch have come almost solely from the cattle and ranching business, resulting from a sincere desire from boyhood to engage in and be an integral part of the ranching industry. This, topped by dedication, determination, hard work, fair play, and honest dealings in all phases of business and everyday life have brought him well-merited success in the career which he launched as a lad. Boys is a success story from the word go, one which has caused and is causing younger men and women interested and engaged in ranching to study his techniques and methods and to seek his advice and counsel, which he's always willing to share. Boy finds the time to listen to friends, neighbors, and associates, and to help in solving their problems. And it's certainly true that when he speaks, people do listen. Boy Proctor truly is a cowman's cowman, and so recognized throughout the industry. Clarence Scarborough, Jr., prominent Midland rancher and businessman, readily admits that Boy Proctor's guidance has had a tremendous impact on his life and career in the ranching business. Clarence says that Boy Proctor has forgotten more about the cow business in all its phases than most all of us will ever know. Tom Lenberry, well-known Midland and Winkler County rancher and cowman, and a close longtime friend and associate of Proctor's, describes Boy is a giant among men, adding that Boy Proctor is the best judge of a man, a cow, and a horse than anyone I've ever known. Dedicated, devoted, determined, untiring, and tenacious are adjectives which best describe the recipient of this year's Golden Spur Award. He's never shied away from hard work, long hours, and he's a firm advocate of those important qualities in others. Furthermore, he has no plans for quitting ranching at this early age. Boy Proctor has always been a breeder of top quality cattle, and at one time, he is said to have had the best herd of Hereford cattle in the country, and he still runs quality Herefords on his Midland ranch. But since the late 1970s, He's used Brangus bulls in a large-scale crossbreeding program on his Texas Panhandle Ranch. Our honored guest, like all other ranchers, has witnessed and experienced ups and downs in the cattle business. But despite droughts and sandstorms, blizzards, livestock diseases, wars, and declining prices, boy always has managed to come through with flying colors, due mainly to his keen business sense, good judgment, and ranching and cattle raising know-how. Boy is quick to credit his loyal, hard-working employees, several of whom have been with him for 30 years or more, for much of his success. At the same time, it should be noted that Boy always has taken special care of his employees and their families. Clinice Baker, Mr. Proctor's secretary for some 20 years, in speaking for her fellow employees, past and present, says all of Mr. Proctor's employees have been better people because of the example he sets for us. 
He has shown us through his example a sense of fairness, loyalty, teamwork, and above all things, honesty. He's been a leader and a teacher for all of us. He's used his experience to teach us and has worked alongside of us, guiding us over the many years. We care for Mr. Proctor, and he cares for all of us. Looking back over the years, one realizes just how busy Foy always has been in his cattle operation. Yet, he never has shunned community responsibilities. He was the first president of Midland Fair Incorporated, sponsor of the famed world championship Midland Rodeos. And even before that, he served as president of the Board of Education of the Midland Independent School District. He helped organize and was charter member of the Board of Governors of Midland Memorial Hospital. He's a former member of the Midland City Council and a director of the Midland Chamber of Commerce. The First United Methodist Church and the United Way of Midland also have been beneficiaries of his interest and generosity. Boy served many years on the board of directors of the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association. He formerly served on the boards of two Midland banks and is the first president of a savings and loan association at Midland. Yes, Boy Proctor is a most remarkable person indeed in so very many, many ways. He is a credit to the cattle industry, to his home community, to his state, and to the United States of America. He certainly is well qualified for and most deserving of the high honor being bestowed upon him here this evening. Just as Leslie King, writing in the New Mexico Stockman says, the cattle industry never again will see a cowman the likes of Foy Proctor. His life story follows. Foy Proctor first saw the light of day on September 28, 1896, in the Reynolds County, Texas ranch home of his parents, L.C. and Rietta Proctor, pioneer ranch family of that area of West Texas. Young Foy, even at a very early age, had a right determined look on his face as he was dressed to brave the cold winter weather of West Texas then, and perhaps looking far ahead to later years in the West Texas panhandle. Foy and his brother Leonard, his senior by some three years, are all dressed up for a trip to town from the Reynolds County Ranch where they spent their early childhood. Leonard also is a prominent Midland resident and rancher. Mr. L.C. Proctor purchased a ranch in Reagan County, some 40 miles southeast of Midland in 1906, and moved his family to Midland in 1907. Soon thereafter, he built this home in Midland, where the Proctor brothers grew up. Boy was about 15 years of age and a student in Midland High School when this picture was taken. Following high school graduation, young Proctor got in one year at the old Midland College before he started ranching on his own leased country near Seminole, Gaines County, Texas. He was about 18 years of age and still with that determined look on his countenance when this picture was taken. World War I interrupted Foy's early ranching experience and in 1917, Foy and his brother Leonard joined the U.S. Marine Corps. They were shipped to France and managed to stay together during their entire tour of duty in World War I. Marine Foy Proctor was 22 years of age and ready for action when he was pictured here. Leonard Proctor, in his Marine Corps uniform, was 25 years old when this picture was taken for the home folks. The Proctor brothers were active in the founding of the Woods W. Lynch Post No. 19 of the American Legion following their return home from military service. Early in the post-war years, they also formed a partnership and had under lease much of the ranch country between Midland and Rankin. At one time, they had 30,000 head of sheep and a sizable herd of cattle on this vast spread. 
Coy Proctor and Sergeant E.L. May. Father of rodeo star Harley May posed for this picture while in service of Uncle Sam in the Marine Corps. Boy was not too long out of military uniform when he met and courted aggressively and successfully the lovely and talented Hal Mitchell. They were married in 1922 and established their home in Midland. Mr. and Mrs. Proctor enjoyed a half a century of happily married life before Mrs. Proctor's untimely death in 1972. Hal Proctor also loved cattle and horses in the ranching business, but she also was active in cultural, church, and social affairs of her hometown. She also had an active role in the staging of Midland rodeos of yesteryears, hosting the cowgirl-sponsored contests on several occasions. Early in his illustrious career, Boy's love for trading cattle and his adeptness at the same launched him on an almost full-time business venture which gained for him widespread prominence and financial reward. He formed profitable connections with feeders and other buyers in the Midwest. And for a number of years, he bought practically all the good calves produced in Midland and adjacent counties, shipping them to feedlots in Nebraska and other Corn Belt states. He was about 30 years of age and well into cattle trading when this picture was taken. Some 10 years later, Proctor was even more active in trading land and cattle while becoming more and more involved in his own ranching operations. John P. Butler of Midland, Mr. Proctor's banker and close friend for almost 60 years, in recalling those years when Foy was buying and shipping from 50 15,000 to 50,000 head of cattle annually, says that Foy had the full confidence of all ranchers and others with whom he dealt, completing a great many of his deals by telephone. Foy had no peer in this respect, he added. One of Foy's major achievements during this period was when he drove 15,000 head of cattle he had bought from area ranchers to three shipping points on the Texas and Pacific Railroad. The first cattle were loaded at Odessa, the second herd at Midland on the following day, and the remainder at Stanton on the third day. The first train load had not reached Nebraska before the last train was loaded at Stanton. This is a feat which few, if any, besides this remarkable person has accomplished. Boy Proctor, at age 50, still maintained his determined facial expression while continually stepping up his ranching operations and becoming more and more involved in other businesses and civic affairs. Boy Proctor also gained prominence in rodeo and stock show circles and was a founder and first president of Midland Fair Incorporated, sponsors of the World Championship Midland Rodeos, which was organized in 1935. He continued to play a leading role in Midland rodeos, which were held annually for more than a quarter of a century. Mr. Proctor, center, is pictured leading a rodeo parade through the streets of downtown Midland in 1937. Boy also judged rodeos for more than 15 years at Stamford, Pecos, Abilene, Big Spring, Corsicana, Las Vegas, New Mexico, and lots of places. In their younger years, Boy and his brother Leonard competed in every rodeo event whenever and wherever possible, and they reportedly were top contenders, too. Boy, for many years, also was in great demand as a judge in stock shows, particularly of Hereford cattle throughout the Southwest. Leonard Proctor, who also had served as president of Midland Fair, was chairman of its rodeo committees when this likeness was published in 1950. After having conducted these ever-increasing ranching operations, mainly on leased land in his younger years, Boy acquired his own ranch for the first time in 1937. It was the Three Links Ranch, located near Wilcox, Arizona. He liked the ranch, the people, and his cattle did well there. 
A roundup was in progress at the headquarters place when the photographer got this shot. <laughs> Mr. Proctor would drive to Arizona from his headquarters in Midland two or three times a year, working cattle for a couple of weeks on most visits. Mrs. Proctor accompanied her husband to Arizona on most of his trips there, and she and Foy are pictured well-mounted and ready to ride. Foy was right in the midst of the action when it came to working the cattle in the pens at the Three Links place. Unique, well-built log pens were used extensively on the Three Links ranch. The Three Links ranch hands and guests gather around the chuck wagon for a noonday meal under the Arizona sun. But it does snow in Arizona on occasion, as evidenced by this 1951 photo. Boy greets his longtime close friends, <laughs> that'll be me, Rex Allen, and Slim Pickens, who came a calling at the Wilcox Ranch. We were over there one weekend uh, at the celebration in Wilcox, and Boy invited us to come out and. Uh, take part in some of the roundup one morning, which Slim and I were happy to do, and we needed the exercise, and our horses did too, so out we went, and we kind of worked all day and drug some calves to the fire and done a little branding and defrosting, and when it was over, Slim came up and was talking to Foy, and he said, Mr. Proctor, how much are you going to charge me and old Rex for working your roundup next year? Well, it was a memorable afternoon, and we really enjoyed it. But you know, cowboys get hungry, too. Meanwhile, back in 1952, Greer Garson of Hollywood fame was paying a visit to Midland. She was interested in learning something about the cattle business. So Foy Proctor and other Midland ranchers escorted her on a tour of the newly built cattle shipping and sales pens at Midland. Boy really expanded his ranching operations in 1947 when he leased the huge C-Bar Ranch, known in earlier days as the Chicago Ranch, just north of Midland. This herd of C-Bar Ranch cattle was pictured soon after he took over operation of the Midland Ranch. Boy also is interested in good horses, and here are several slides showing Proctor and his crew gathering and working his horses in 1959. Fat Hereford cows and calves, some of Proctor's best, find plenty of grass to eat on the Seabar Ranch near Midland in this 1967 scene. Then, in 1953, Boy topped all of his previous acquisitions when he purchased 95 sections of land out of the old XIT ranch, 16 miles west of Channing in the Texas Panhandle. This ranch, one of the show places of the Panhandle country, has become Boy's pride and joy. Through the years, it has received numerous awards for its cattle and for soil and water conservation practices. Boy, however, still resides in Midland and runs Hereford cattle on the Sea Ranch, which he has leased for almost 40 years. Mr. Proctor also took a fling at New Mexico ranching when he bought the Magdalena Ranch there in 1950. In the mid-1960s, however, he decided to consolidate his ranching operations closer to home. He sold his Arizona ranch in 1965 and his New Mexico ranch in 1966. Don't know whether he ever got paid for him or not. Boy and his Channing Ranch foreman and his daughter, Junior Hayes and Kathleen, are mounted and ready to escort Boy's guests, Harvey Hurd, John P. Butler, and Frank Cowden, Jr. of Midland, on a tour of the Panhandle Ranch. Even while buying cattle and operating his vast ranching interests scattered over a three-state area, Boy Proctor still has found the time to pursue other business interests and to fulfill nobly and well his obligations and responsibilities as a good citizen of the community, which he has called home for 77 years. Here, Foy joins with other former officers and directors of the First National Bank of Midland in June 1957. And looking on as ground is broken for a new multi-story building to house the financial institution. 
Mr. Proctor also was a founder and first president of Citizens Savings and Loan Association of Midland in 1960. Mrs. Proctor is pictured as she received passbook number one from Assistant Secretary Betty Lutke when she opened the first account at the new savings and loan firm. Observing the transaction are President Proctor and Vice President and Manager L. Roy Prescott. There's just no way of knowing all the wonderful and substantial and worthwhile things, financial and otherwise, which Boy Proctor has done for individuals, churches, and organizations, but needless to say, they're numerous. And many are the men, women, and children who have been and are being touched in one way or another as a result of his generosity. An excellent example of the Proctor spirit of generosity occurred in 1965, when after Foy and Hale had built and occupied a new home to better suit their particular need, they gave this beautiful, spacious, ranch-style house, located in a fashionable section of Midland, to the First Methodist Church of Midland to be used as a parsonage. Dr. and Mrs. Timothy Guthrie of the First Methodist Church of Midland visit with Mr. and Mrs. Proctor in the beautiful church parsonage which has been given to the church by the Proctors. Some of the largest, best-built, and best-equipped working and loading pens to be found anywhere are located at the Channing Ranch, making the handling of cattle easier and less frustrating for both man and animal. Boy Proctor pioneered with considerable success the first use of overhead cattle feeders in the Southwest. The feed is loaded on specially built trucks at the mill and transported to the Channing Ranch, where it's unloaded by special process into an overhead feeder. The operation has proved profitable for the ranch. Here Foy is pictured with Mr. and Mrs. Junior Hayes of the Channing Ranch on a 1969 visit to the ranch. A couple of would-be Midland cowhands, John Butler and Paul Davis, visit with Foy at the ranch in 1970. Here Foy gives his best sales pitch to a prospective cattle buyer in February of 1970. Foy and Hale Proctor look over the rangeland in solid comfort on a ranch visit in August 1971. Here, Proctor cattle are delivered from ranch loading pens in August of 1971. Jack Johnson of Dalhart and Foy Proctor relax after working cattle in 1975. Ranch owner and his foreman are pictured on an inspection tour of the Channing Ranch in 1978. Foy checks some of his cattle in pens at the Panhandle Ranch in 1978. Here he stands tall, erect, and ready for a full day's work on the ranch in December of 1978. It's roundup and cattle working time on the panhandle in 1978. Here's Mr. Proctor and one of his favorite ponies. A scene of the beautifully landscaped and well-kept grounds at the Channing Ranch headquarters. Foy and Beth Hayes view a ranch working scene at the ranch near Channing. This fine mare and colt stare right back at the photographer, whoever he or she was in this Proctor Ranch photo. Here's two of the registered Brangus bulls in use on the Channing Ranch. Here, Foy tours a pasture on foot to get a better look at the excellent range conditions. The Foy Proctor Ranch brand takes its place among other famous cattle brands burned into a wall in the Clayburg Center at Texas A&M University. This event occurred in 1979. Melvin Cotton, foreman of Proctor's C-Bar Ranch at Midland for almost 30 years, is pictured with the boss at the ranch in 1979. 
A visitor from England in 1980 is pictured at the original headquarters ranch house at the huge Seabar Ranch just north of Midland. A Texas state historical marker has been placed on the Seabar Ranch House, which was erected in the 1880s. Mr. Proctor and his secretary, Clinice Baker, briefed guests on the history and operation of the Sea Ranch before taking them on a tour of the property. And then, in 1981, Boy was the guest of honor at a festive party given by employees, close friends, and associates on the occasion of his 85th birthday anniversary. He's pictured with his two ranch foremen, Junior Hayes and Melvin Cotton. And here he is with my old friend Hugh Bennett of Colorado Springs, Colorado, who was started rodeoing by Mr. Proctor at Seagraves, Texas a few years back. Then with Panhandle friends, with Kermit friends, including Mr. and Mrs. Tom Lineberry, with Andrews and Midland friends, including Johnny Smith, with more Panhandle friends, and with Beth Hayes of the Channing Ranch. Here Foy Proctor takes over the scales and weighing cattle sold and being shipped from his ranch at Channing on June 29, 1983. Foy is a firm believer in hiring, training, and keeping good personnel in the operation of his ranches. Some of his hands are third generation members of families working for the Midland Cattlemen. Foy Proctor, who always is sought to steer clear of the limelight, nevertheless has made the news in a big way in recent weeks in connection with the announcement of his selection as the 1984 winner of the Golden Spur Award. Boy could not do much about this widespread, richly deserved publicity, except to just sit back and enjoy it. Boy Proctor was the subject of a feature article on this innovative crossbreeding program conducted on his Panhandle Ranch appearing in the December 1978 issue of the Cattleman Magazine. And there you have the exciting life story of Mr. Foy Proctor, a successful cattleman, a gentleman, and a square dealer of the very highest order. <laughs>